Hi everyone, I hope you guys are studying well for law and the lectures are helping you. Today we will be starting with uh, acceptance of deposit. The chapter itself is, uh, uh, you know, a lot of things that has to be remembered. Like have you had management and administration? Same way, acceptance of deposit is a chapter where you have to remember a lot of things. But the most important thing that we have to remember here is rule 21c which says what uh, money that you accept is not a deposit. So rule 21c is the most important thing that you need to remember here and mostly your practical case study questions for the examination will come from your rule 21c. Other than that you have your compliances as to if you want to accept deposits what are the compliances that you have to do if you are accepting it from public or say you are accepting it from only your members then in that case what are the compliances you have to do it's a long list of compliance but the good part is that for both the uh, deposits that you accept either from the public at large or from the members the uh, compliances more or less are similar so you have to remember a single thing for both of them only when you are accepting from the public at large there is something additional that you have to do so there are some additional compliances for acceptance of deposit from public so we'll highlight those compliances and then uh, the other compliances are common for the two of them so uh, let's start with deposits we'll try and remember everything in the class itself so that you don't have to kind of you know uh, you don't get confused at the end of course you'll have to study at uh, your end you'll have to revise keep revising it in order to remember but we'll try to uh, kind of remember everything all the rule 21c provisions which are asked in the examinations in the class itself so that if there is a practical case study question you are able to answer the same in your examination now coming to deposit what is a deposit any money that a company is accepting in whatever form or in whatever name you call it will be called as a deposit so any money that is accepted by the company uh, say it is by way of loan or it is by way of an advance will be called as a deposit and deposit why is everyone so scared because if the amount is considered to be a deposit there is a long list of compliances that you need to comply with if the amount that you are accepting is considered to be a deposit and hence it is something that all the companies are scared of all the companies are constantly monitoring the money that they received in order to ensure that they do not fall under the deposit regulations because if they do then they have to comply with all the provisions of the deposit regulations now uh, the, uh, the deposits that you accept can be secure deposit or unsecured deposit so there is no harm in accepting deposit if you can comply with the regulations you can accept deposit but what happens is that sometimes the money that you receive in the normal course of business you may not consider it to be a deposit but it actually is a deposit and falls under the deposit regulations so if you are accepting money as a company as a deposit then in that case you comply with the regulations and that's perfectly fine in this you can accept two type of deposit one is your secure deposit and the other is your unsecured deposit secure deposit is when you are accepting money from the public at large or from the members as a deposit and then against that deposit you're giving a security saying that tomorrow if i am unable to pay that money back to you then in that case here is my goods worth rupees 2 lakhs you can go and sell the goods in the open market that's a secure deposit unsecured is where you're not giving any security so you can have secure deposits or unsecured deposits depending on your terms and conditions that you finalize while raising the deposits from the members or from the public at large now what is rule 21c why is it so important rule 21c gives you a list of uh, you know money that you may receive in the ordinary course of business which will not be treated as deposits so if you get any of this in your account as a company then it will not be considered as a deposit however there are certain rules there so if you don't comply with these then they will be considered as a deposit now what does the provision say any amount received from central or state government any amount that you receive from central or state government or from any foreign banks or, or foreign institutions or, or from any foreign government will not be considered to be a deposit 
so uh, foreign government why is it not deposit because then again it's governed by the fema regulations and hence it will not fall under the default uh, deposit regulations then any loan or facility received from any banking company or from any state bank of india or any of its subsidiary so if you are receiving anything from the bank then it's already got covered under the banking regulation act because it's a specific kind of a company so here again this will not be considered to be your deposit any loan or financial institute uh, financial assistance that you receive from your public financial institution again it will not be considered to be a deposit so any money received from central government or state government any money received from any foreign banks or foreign institutions or foreign government because they are covered by fema regulations it will not be covered to be a deposit then any loan or assistance received from any banks or sbi or any of its subsidiaries is again not covered here any loan or assistance received from public financial institutions again will not be covered here then any amount received against issue of commercial paper or any other instrument these are normally issued by the rbi and because these are issued by the rbi it's already governed by the rbi act so any commercial paper you uh, raise uh, issued to raise money or any other security which is listed by the rbi then in that case it will not be considered to be a deposit so again keep revising if you have any money from central government or state government if you have any money received from your foreign government or your foreign banks or foreign institutions which is covered by fema it will not be covered any loan or money received from any of the banks or sbi or any of its subsidiaries again it will not be covered any loan or financial institution that you receive from pfi public financial institutions again the same will not be covered and any money uh, by issue of commercial paper or any other security which is approved by the rbi then in that case again it will not be considered to be a deposit now any money received by a company from another company in the usual course of business a company may pay the other company and again that will not be covered under the deposit regulations then this is important this is something which is important any amount towards share application money i think i should use a different color share application money or advance towards allotment of securities pending allotment treated if de as deposit if not allotted within 60 days so here what happens is that uh, what happens is that when you are a company like we studied in prospectus when you are a company when shareholders are giving you funds you have to allot the securities within period of 60 days correct so allotment has to happen within a period of 60 days if you do not allot within a period of 60 days what did we study under the prospectus regulations that you get a 15 days time frame in which you have to refund if you have not allotted within this period then you have to refund it within 15 days and if you do not refund then there is a interest at the rate of 12% per annum correct so here what is the deposit regulation saying is that if you have received the share application money but you have not allotted the shares and you have not refunded the amount you've kept the amount with you then at the end of this 15 days this you will of course pay interest at 12% per annum that stays but in addition to that you will also uh consider this amount as deposit so your entire share application money against which you have not allotted shares or against which you have not given a refund will be considered to be a deposit and you will have to comply with the deposit regulations very 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 important case study that will be asked here is basically telling you that uh, share application money was received by the company and then it refunded it within uh, it will not give you 15 days it will give you a date so you have to sit and count whether it's done in 15 days or not if not done then it will be considered to be deposit otherwise if it's refunded within 15 days then not a deposit so here say for example on 1st jan 2022 and uh, 1st march 2022 add to a lot then i get 15 days 15th march 2022 okay so your 15th march 2022 before that i have to give the refund now the question will be this they will not give it so simply so they will just tell you that uh, you know the shares uh, of uh, the share application money was received on 1st jan 2022 
they could not alert within the time frame they will not give you the time frame because they want to check in your answer whether do you know that the time frame is 60 days or not and then the company refunded the entire amount on 7th march 2022 explain as per the provisions of companies act so you're there testing your knowledge on the prospectus provision and they're also testing your knowledge on the deposit provision so you should be able to answer both saying that uh, if they have to allot within a period of 60 days if they don't they have to refund it within a period of 15 days else there's an interest of 12 percent per annum also if it's not refunded it will be considered to be a deposit this is the regulation facts of the case this is the facts of the case solution is that they have they had to refund it by 15th of March. They have refunded it by 7th of March and hence this will not be considered to be a deposit. Okay. So, this is the kind of question that will be asked. Then, coming to the next part. So, this is very important. Any amount received from any director or relative of director of a private company Provided declaration is giving, given in writing that the loan is out of own funds and not borrowed funds. So, if I am a company and if I am taking any loan from my director or I am taking any loan from the relative of director, if I am a private company, company, private company, what is it saying? If I am a direct, I am taking loan from director or loan this will not be considered to be a deposit provided that this loan amount if they have given you say a loan of 2 lakhs or 5 lakhs whatever this amount is this amount should be out of the funds of the director he should not borrow it from somewhere and then give it to you as a uh, loan it should be out of my own fund so if I am a director out of my own funds I am giving you the loan and in that case it will be not be considered to be a deposit but say for example director does not have say for example i need 52 lakhs director does not have 52 lakhs he goes to the bank and he says okay bank can you please give me a loan the bank gives loan of 52 lakhs this loan is then given to the company of 52 lakhs then it will be considered to be a deposit so in case of a public company it's only a director in case of a private company, it is director and relative of director. Both are considered. Both can give the loan. If out of own funds, then not deposit. If out of borrowed funds, then it is considered to be a deposit. Now, revising from the beginning, what are the pointers that we have studied? That the following things will not be considered to be a deposit. Rule number one is your amount that you receive from your central or state government or any amount that you receive from your foreign government, foreign institutions, foreign banks covered by FEMA, so then it will not be considered. Then any loan or any facility that you are receiving from any bank or from SBI or any of its subsidiaries will not be considered to be a deposit. Any amount that you are uh, receiving from public financial institutions as loan or uh, financial assistance will not be considered to be a deposit. Any amount that you are raising by issue of commercial paper or securities of similar kind where uh, which are governed by the RBI then in that case it will not be considered to be a deposit then inter company if uh, I take uh, if one company takes a loan from another company then it will not be considered to be a deposit share application money if I have allotted the shares or if shares are not allotted I have refunded within a period of 15 days from the end of the 60 day period then not a deposit but I don't allot for 60 days then I don't even refund it within 15 day period then after the 15 day period is over that amount will be considered to be a deposit then the last provision which we just studied is that if any amount is received from director or relative of director of a private company is not deposit provided it is out of own funds and it is not out of borrowed funds then in that case it will not be considered to be a deposit then uh, any bonds or uh, issue of any bonds or debentures secured by a first charge if you have a uh, 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 raised any bonds or debentures issued any bonds or debentures for raising money 
then if it is secured by first charge or any other charge which is ranking pari pasu with the first charge or if you have uh, you know uh, raised pari pasu is basically same as the first charge or if you have raised any money by uh, issue of uh, uh, sh uh, security of schedule 3 assets the tangible assets of schedule 3 then again it will not be considered to be as a deposit or if you if you have issued any bonds or debentures which are convertible into equity shares within a 10 year period again it will not be considered to be a deposit so bond to debentures secured by first charge ranking pari pasu which uh, first charge schedule 3 assets secured by schedule 3 assets or convertible into uh, shares within a period of 10 years will not be considered to be a deposit in the schedule 3 assets important thing to note is that uh, uh, in the schedule 3 the market value of the assets will be considered for the purpose of uh, issuing the bonds or debentures then amount raised again this is something which has been asked quite frequently amount raised by issue of non convertible debentures not constituting a charge on the assets of the company and listed on a recognized stock exchange so non convertible debentures not secured and listed will not be considered to be a uh, deposit non convertible debentures and convertible debentures we already know what it is convertible are those which can be converted into equity shares non convertible are those which has to be redeemed and cannot be converted into equity shares so non convertible debentures which are not listed unlisted non convertible debentures uh, sorry uh, unsecured uh, uh, non convertible debentures sorry so non convertible debentures unsecured and listed will not be considered to be a deposit then amount again something which has been asked frequently these two points okay this also any amount received from an employee of the company not exceeding his annual salary in the uh, nature of non interest bearing security deposit so if an employee is giving me an amount it will not be considered to be a deposit provided he is giving me an amount up to his ctc so say for example i am a company i have this employee mr a mr b and mr c his CTC is 10 lakhs, CTC 5 lakhs and CTC 50 lakhs. CTC is cost to the company. So, here I have 3 employees. Now, Mr. A gives me rupees 8 lakhs, Mr. B gives me rupees 8 lakhs and Mr. C gives me rupees 70 lakhs. In this case, what is considered to be a deposit? It is saying that any amount which is given by an employee, these are all employees, any amount given by the employees which is not exceeding the CTC. So, your CTC is 10 lakhs, he has given me 8 lakhs, not a deposit, provided it is a non interest bearing. So, you are not charging any interest on it basically. So, this is not a deposit, okay. Here his CTC is 5 lakhs, he is giving 8 lakhs. So, it is exceeding his annual salary and hence this will be considered to be a deposit. Here your CTC is 50 lakhs, you are giving 70 lakhs, this will be considered to be a deposit. So, anything which is exceeding the annual salary of the employee will be considered to be a deposit. So, now revising from the beginning, what are the things that are con not considered to be a deposit? First is any amount you receive from the central or the state government. Any amount you receive from foreign government, foreign banks, foreign institutions provided they are all covered under FEMA, it will not be considered to be a deposit. Any loan or facility you receive from any bank or SBI or any of its subsidiaries will not be considered to be a deposit. Any loan or financial is, uh, assistance you receive from public financial institutions will not be considered to be a deposit. Any uh, amount raised by issue of commercial papers or any securities uh, issued by the RBI then again it will not be considered to be a deposit then any amount uh, you receive from any other company inter company not considered to be a deposit share application money if you take you have to allot shares within 60 days if not allotted you have to refund within 15 days if you have not allotted within 60 days and then after 60 days is over 15 days you have not refunded the money then after 15 days it will be considered to be a deposit then any amount received from any director or relative of director of a private company is not a deposit 
provided the amount has been given out of his own funds and not out of borrowed funds. If he is giving money out of borrowed funds, then it will be considered to be a deposit. But if he is giving out of own funds, I have 1 CR in my account, I am giving 1 CR, then it is not considered to be a deposit. Then the next is that issue of uh, uh, debentures or bonds. Uh, secured by first charge or something that is ranking same as your first charge or by issue of schedule 3 assets excluding intangible assets or by issue of bonds or debentures which are convertible within 10 year period all the money that you receive under this will not be considered to be a deposit or if you are issuing non-convertible debentures which are uh, not secured and which are listed on the recognized stock exchange because it's already getting governed by SEBI regulations and it will not be considered to be a deposit. And the last that we studied here is that if an employee is giving an amount, it is not a deposit provided that amount is not exceeding his annual salary. If it's exceeding his annual salary, then it's a deposit. But if it's not, then it will not be considered to be a deposit. Okay. So, are we all on the same page? Should we move ahead now? Now, what does it say? Uh, these are all simple, simple provisions. Any non-interest bearing amount or received held in a trust or any amount accepted by a Nidhi company not covered, any amount by way of subscription to CHIT not covered, any amount received under collective investment scheme not covered, any amount uh, received from alternate investment fund, domestic venture capital fund, infrastructure investment trust, real estate investment trust and mutual funds. These are not covered. Why are they not covered? Because the, this and this, they are all governed by SEBI. So, it's already covered under SEBI regulations. So, those amounts are not considered to be a deposit. Now, uh, any amount, this is also again important. Any amount brought in by the promoters of the company by way of unsecured loans in pursuance of the stipulation of any lending financial institution. Now, what does this mean? What happens is that sometimes when I am a company, I go to the bank and I say that, you know what, I want a loan of 50 CR. Okay. Now, the bank is saying that, you know, I will give you the loan. Provided that when I put in 50 CR, you will also have to put in say for example 10 CR. Okay. So, if you are ready to put in 10 CR, I will put in the 50 CR. And just to gain the confidence whether the directors are putting that amount or not, promoters are putting that amount or not. And once the uh, loan has been repaid, this 50 CR goes back. At that time, you will also have to pay this 10 crores to the promoter sorry this is not from the company this is from promoters correct so you have to pay this 10 cr to the promoters back so it is saying any amount brought in by the promoters of the company by way of unsecured loan it's not a secured it's not any security in pursuance of stipulation stipulation is basically a condition which is put by the lending financial institution or a bank which says that i will put this amount of this 50 cr provided you also put in x uh, rupees into the company to show that okay you know you are talking business you are serious with what you're discussing so this is unsecured then this amount that the company receives from the promoter is not a deposit. But in the same situation, okay, I will give you another example. So, this is promoter and this is the bank. Bank is giving 50 CR, promoter is giving 10 CR. In stipulation, it is unsecured plus stipulation that is condition and hence he is putting 10 CR in the company. Now company has paid 50 CR back. Once it pays 50 CR back to the financial institution or the bank, it also has to pay back this 10 CR. If you do not pay this back after paying this 50 CR back, then this amount will be considered to be a deposit. Okay, so if you are paying back, paid back, then not deposit but if you are not paying this back then it will be considered to be a deposit is that very very clear if not just 
like revise the entire thing again so that you get an idea um, if uh, I have take, uh, given as a promoter amount to the company in uh, in pursuance to a condition that's put by the bank saying that I will put this amount provided you also put an X number of rupees. So I've put the amount. Now when the company has repaid the bank, it also has to repay the promoter. If it doesn't repay the promoter after repaying the bank, then the amount that is put in by the promoter will be considered to be a deposit. Okay. So again important and then any amount you have received in the normal course of business these has certain conditions wherein it is saying that uh, if you have received any amount towards any goods or services for a period of 365 days uh, it will not be considered to be a deposit provided you provide the goods or you provide the services within a period of 365 days or if you have received any advance for maintenance or warranty normally when you take a laptop you give warranty money in advance correct right? so if you have given that for a period of 5 years or the amount that is required as per that particular industry whichever is less so if you have given that amount as warranty or maintenance that will not be considered to be a deposit if you have taken any amount uh, towards printing publication like magazines you pay for an annual magazine and then every month they send you the magazine again it will not be considered to be a deposit so these are some of the uh, things which are there in the ordinary course of business which will not be considered to be a deposit and uh, the last is amount of 25 lakh rupees or more received by a startup company by way of convertible note in a single tranche this convertible note is basically a debt which is to be converted into equity shares within five years so if it is converted into equity shares within a period of five years then it will not be considered to be a deposit provided it is received 25 lakh rupees or more by a startup company in a single tranche so in one shot you've got that uh, money then it will not be considered to be a deposit so this is rule 21c it's extremely important especially these smaller points probably may not be as they may ask you in the mcq if need be but these points which we have marked as important are something which has been asked time and again in your examination uh, we'll also discuss the uh, exam questions it's also there on the YouTube channel so uh, exam questions asked pertaining to deposits or uh, pertaining to all the chapters basically but if pertaining to deposits you get the exam questions you see the exam questions they are standard exam questions nothing out of the box you just have to remember these provisions and now that you've understood the provisions it will be easier for you to remember you just have to read them for a few days in a row and you will remember the provisions so whenever you're sitting free just try to recollect all the pointers and you will be able to recollect the pointers and write it in your examination they will never ask you a question saying what are the amount which are not considered as a deposit under rule 21c so they will never ask you to answer all of these so this is never going to be asked it will always be a case study or a mcq which is asking something pertaining to this so you don't have to write down all these but you have to remember them in order to answer the questions uh, for practical case study questions okay so uh, these are the amounts which are not considered to be a deposit anything other than this will be considered to be a deposit and the deposit regulations will apply is that clear now uh, what are the companies to which these provisions do not apply? Banking company, NBFC, housing finance company, any other company specified by government because these are specific companies which are regulated under a particular specific act. They do not uh, have to comply with the deposit regulations. Uh, depositor is any person who is depositing money with the company, maybe a member or maybe the public at large, depending on which kind of company you are. Now, if I, I said I can accept deposits from two people, from members and from public. But when public is involved, not everyone can accept money from the public, right? Like how in prospectus when we did IPO, not everyone can accept money from the public at large. Only public companies can do that. Similarly, deposits from public cannot be accepted by anyone and everyone. Who can accept deposit? Any company. Very important any company which is a eligible company what is an eligible company it has to be a public company and it should have a net worth of 100 crores or or 
a turnover of minimum 500 crores and if you are a public company with a net worth of more than 100 crores or turnover of more than 500 crores then in that case you can accept deposit from the public but for accepting deposit you have to be eligible company these three things has to be there if they are not there then in that case you cannot accept money from the public this is or so either you have a net worth of 100 crores or turnover of 500 crores whatever even if one of them is there then you can if you are a public company you can accept money from the public at large other than that you need consent by way of special resolution it has to be filed with ROC and ordinary resolution will suffice if it is within the limits which are specified what are the specified limits is now something that we will study now now for accepting deposits from members <coughs> I think there is some issue with the uh, schedule so there is one table here missing which is uh, this page missing so it has to go there I don't know how it's landed up here but uh, yes it has to go there so it's saying that if you want to accept deposits from members then there are a set of 25 uh, compliances that you have to do as a company for accepting deposits from members and if you are uh, accepting deposit from public then first you have to be eligible company which is a public company with a net worth of more than 100 crores or turnover of more than 500 crores so if I comply with that then I can accept money from the public at large and in that case I have to comply with these 25 regulations plus a few more regulations which will be applicable for accepting money from public at large what are these regulations again your questions that are going to be asked are going to be something that is uh, uh, not going to be like what are the provisions pertaining to deposits it is always going to be something out of the 25 things that are mentioned here so in this case what are the things that are mentioned here the first thing it says is that you need to have an ordinary resolution so if you are accepting money from the public at large you need to pass an ordinary resolution other than that you also have to issue a circular in the form of an advertisement and in that circular you will give the details of what amount you are accepting as deposit why you are accepting that particular amount what is the financial position of the company and this circular has to be circulated to your members by post or electronic mode you also have to publish it in the newspaper in uh, it will be in one english newspaper and one vernacular newspaper and uh, always remember whenever something has to be published in the newspaper under the Companies Act it is always one English one vernacular and this ad will be valid for six months or till the date of AGM whichever is earlier and uh, uh, statutory auditors will have to give a report that no default has been made in repayment of deposits so first thing is that I have to pass a special resolution uh, ordinary resolution sorry second thing is that I have to issue a circular circular will give my financial position why I am ex I accepting deposits and details of those things I have to give that circular to my members at large I have to publish it in the newspaper one English one vernacular newspaper and along with that I have to give a, a statutory auditor report saying that I have not made any default in the payment of deposits and the repayment of deposits which I have accepted earlier I have made no default in payment of the money or the interest thereon if I have made a default then in that case what will happen is first I have to make good the default then after making good the default for five years I cannot accept or uh, renew any deposits and then once the five years period is over then I can accept deposits so if you make a default then five years is your cooling off period you can't do anything in that five year period okay so this is second so first is passing resolution uh, second is issuing circular then circular which you get has to be filed with the uh, ROC of course within a period of 30 days so everything the ROC has to be uh, aware of then this deposits that you are accepting is something which can be a secure deposit or an unsecured deposit if you are giving it as a secure deposit then there is a charge on it so it's a secured creditor basically then 
again something which has been asked time and again the tenure of your deposit it can be accepted for a minimum period of 6 months and maximum 36 months okay remember minimum 6 months maximum 36 months you can accept it for a lower time frame but it cannot be less than 3 months has to be repayable only after 3 months so 3 to 6 months wala also deposit you can accept provided that is for a short term period so that amount is for a short term fund requirement which is less than 10 percent of your paid up capital plus free reserves plus security premium so all the percentages that we have in this chapter are a percentage of paid up capital free reserves and security premium so 10 percent of your paid up capital free reserves and security premium is that uh, something if you are uh, accepting a deposit which is less than 10 percent then in that case you can have it for three to six months that's okay but you cannot have anything which is payable on demand like if i go to the company i say i want my deposit no it's not payable on demand and secondly it can has to be uh, payable only after three months minimum three months you, you have to hold it with the company provided it is being raised for short term funds if it is not for short term fund requirement then in that case the minimum amount is six months and maximum amount is 30 uh, maximum time frame is 36 months very very important now how much amount of deposits can I uh, raise? 35 percent of it has to be less than 35 percent of the aggregate paid up capital, free reserves and securities premium. Once I am accepting deposits, it has to be within the time frame that is there and I will also have to create a deposit repayment reserve account. Again, something which has been asked time and again. deposit repayment reserve account is I have to see how much of my deposits are maturing in the next financial year and 20% of that amount has to be created as a deposit and created uh, put into the deposit repayment reserve account by 30th of April each year and this amount can be used only and only for the purpose of repayment of deposit cannot be used for any other purpose only and only for the purpose of repayment of deposits uh, then uh, security is something which we have discussed then when you have to repay the deposit it has to be repaid with interest if there is no, if the amount is not paid any loss or damage has to be a uh, depositor may apply to the tribunal if there is premature repayment of deposit so sometimes what happens is that I am uh, uh, as a depositor I may want it early if there is premature depo uh, repayment of deposit like how you have in your uh, bank FD if you have a break, break a bank FD then in that case what will they do that they have told you that for this FD I am going to give you say 5% uh, interest now if I break the FD before that one year period is over then in that case they will give me 1% less so they will give me 4% for the time I have kept the money there so similarly here if deposits are repaid prematurely then in that case you get 1% less but if you are repaying the deposit prematurely to maintain your balance this 35% I have to maintain say I have accepted more and now I have realized oh my god I have raised more than 35% then I will want to repay and come back to this limit of 35 percent so if I am uh, repaying the deposit to maintain the imbalance then in that case uh, I have to give full 5 percent then I cannot reduce 1 percent because it is my fault that I am repaying the amount early and secondly if uh, I am giving it to any naval or Indian army force or uh, any of these in time of an emergency if I have to give that amount to them then in that case I cannot uh, reduce that 1 percent I have to pay full interest interest even if it is a pre, uh, pre uh, mature uh, repayment of deposit then uh, next is uh, the rate of interest or brokerage will be the rate specified by RBI for NBFCs that same rate will be applicable you will have to make a disclosure in the financial statement if you are a public company then you will have to say amount that is received from directors if you are a private company amount from directors and relative of directors why would this be because here when we discussed we said that amount received from director or relative of director of a private company correct so that disclosure has to be made here 
then I can have deposit in joint names. So like how you have joint accounts with the bank. Similarly, I can make a joint deposit. So my my mom's name and my dad's name. All three of us will give money for the deposit. At a time, you can have only three people in that for the same deposit. And there are different terms and conditions which says either uh, payable jointly or payable uh, to any or survivor. So when the deposit get matured, either it will be paid equally to all of us or any one or survivor or uh, either or survivor basically there are different clauses which are applicable for the purpose of uh, you know giving the deposits in the joint name and uh, once uh, i want to once i've decided that i want to give the deposit and if i have agreed that uh, i will give say for example 50000 rupees as deposit then i have to make an application to the company saying that i want to give this amount as a deposit and then give that amount as a deposit once i give that amount as a deposit within 21 days the company has has to give me a deposit receipt that deposit receipt will con cover all the details about how much deposit I have given, how much is the interest rate and when will the deposit expire, what happens in case of premature termination. All the details will be given in the deposit receipt and uh, then within 7 days I have to transfer uh, as a company, I have to make an entry into the deposit register. Similar to the register we have learnt under management and administration, I have to make a deposit register and I have to transfer the details into the deposit register as a company once I have issued the deposit receipt to the uh, members. And uh, this deposit register has to be maintained for a period of 8 years, 8 financial years. You don't have to maintain it forever. And you have to also file the details with the registrar in form DPT-3 on or before 30th of June. And if I fail to pay the deposit, then I'll have to pay 18% interest on the overdue period that's there. So, these are the provisions. One last provision which we have is that private companies have exemption from certain provisions like, uh, just a second, uh, this issuing of circular they have exemption here so because circular is not issued filing the same with rbi then uh, the repayment of depo uh, repayment of deposit is going to be the same premature termination may be different they may have different provisions for the pre premature deposit or uh, repayment so uh, and the statutory declaration to be given by the auditor so there are a few provisions where the uh, private companies get an exemption which are the companies which will get an exemption so these are the companies if it's a company uh, who is accepting deposit less than 100 percent of the paid up capital securities premium free reserves or it's a startup company and uh, uh, if for uh, it has not yet finished five years from the date of incorporation or it's fulfilling any of the following criteria it's not an associate or subsidiary company or borrowings from bank is less than twice the paid up capital of 50 crores whichever is lower it has not defaulted in repayment of borrowings then in that case they will have to file a return in uh, register with the registrar in form dpt3 saying that we are these kind of companies i have a um, private company who has raised deposit less than 100 percent or my debt equity is less than 2 is to 1 or I am a startup company which has not yet completed 5 years then in that case I get exemption from certain regulations which I have to comply with in this particular provision and I have to file a return with the registrar in form DPT 3 in that case. So these are all the provisions pertaining to the acceptance of deposits from the members again quickly going through them. If I am a company, I have to issue an ordinary resolution, I have to issue a circular. Circular has to be uh, giving details about why I am raising the deposit and the financial position of my company and I will give the circular to my members by post or email or whatever and I will also publish it in the newspaper, one English, one vernacular newspaper along with it i that advertisement will be valid for a period of six months or the date of agm whichever is earlier or along with it i'll have to give a statutory declaration from the auditor that i've never defaulted in repayment of deposits if i have defaulted then in that case uh, there is a cooling of period of five years so i have to wait for five years then i can kind of take the money 
then if i am a company and if i have uh, sorry if i am a uh, shareholder and if i want to kind of give the deposit or if i am a member and i want to give the deposit then i have to file an application form and along with the application form i give the deposit once i give the deposit within 21 days the company has to issue a deposit receipt giving details of the deposit that i have given and make an entry in the register of deposits within a period of 7 days of issuing the receipt <coughs> if i want to apply in joint names i can do but at a time it cannot exceed 3 people once i have created <coughs> the register the register has also to be filed with the roc and uh, uh, along with it i have to ensure that the deposit that i am accepting is for a minimum period of 6 months maximum 36 months but if i am a company who has a short term fund requirement and who is raising deposit which is less than 10% of paid up capital free reserves and securities premium then in that case i can issue it for a period of at least 3 months but uh, less than 6 months and i cannot issue any deposits which are repayable on demand or which are repay repayable within a period of 3 months i cannot issue any such uh, deposits and once i have issued deposit every year i have to check what are the deposits which are expiring in the next financial year and 20% of such deposits has to be transferred 20% of such uh, amount which is uh, uh, renewing in the next financial year has to be transferred to deposit repayment reserve account by 30th of april of that particular year then uh just a second just to see oh uh, yes the maximum amount of deposits that i can accept from members is to be less than 35% of my aggregate paid up capital free reserves and securities premium the uh, aggregate paid up capital free reserve security premium remains same throughout your deposit chapter only the percentages keep changing and um, if there is premature repayment of deposit then in that case 1% less i will have to give to the member but if i am repaying repaying it to maintain my uh, you know limit maximum limit or if i have crossed and i want to make it back to that maximum limit or i am giving it to any person of army or naval and it's for uh, in case of an emergency then in that case i will have to uh, not deduct that 1% i'll have to give the entire uh, interest that is there even if there is premature repayment of deposit and uh, yes <coughs> <clears throat> the rate of interest will be as specified by the uh, uh, RBI in case of NBFCs. I have to make disclosure in the financial statements of amount that I have received from directors, and if I am a private company, amount received from directors or relative of private uh, relative of directors, and um, other than that, uh, if I am a private company, then I am exempted. from the certain regulations pertaining to issue of circular filing of circular giving out statutory declaration these provisions i am exempted provided i have accepted deposits which are less than 100% of paid up capital free reserves and securities premium or i am a startup company which has not yet completed 5 years or i am a company which is a holding or a subsidiary company or which has a debt is less than twice the paid up capital of 50 crores whichever is lower and uh, i have to file that return with the registrar in form dpt3 so these are the provisions pertaining to deposits from members now coming to deposits to be accepted from the public by eligible company what is an eligible company it has to be a public company net worth of more than 100 crores turnover of more than 500 crores any any one of this net worth of more than 100 crores or turn over of more than 500 crores if i comply with any of this then in that case i am eligible company and i can raise deposits from the public at large now i said the provisions are same for both except for a few let's see what is the new thing first is i have this turn over criteria which was not there earlier then i need to file special resolution and uh, ordinary resolution this is same even there it was required i have to issue circular again is the same uh same provisions that will be applied here then i have to create deposit repayment reserve same there also 20% of deposits maturing in the next year by 30th of april same provision rate of interest brokerage same as specified by rbi same provision repayment of deposit has to be as per the terms and conditions along with interest if i don't repay it on time then 18% interest will be applicable and if i don't repay at all then they can go to the tribunal 
disclosure to be made again same here the private company part will not come because only public company can accept from the public at large so that will not come deposits in joint name again same then giving application then giving deposit receipt within 21 days filing in a registrar within 7 days maintaining the register for a period of 8 years all of these provision again everything is the same nothing changes so you see all the provisions are the same and they will never ever ask you what are the provisions for a company who is accepting what are the rules and regulations to be complied by a public company who is accepting money from the public at large they will not ask you but they will ask you internal things like how much deposit repayment reserve is required to be maintained or what is to be given in the circular what happens when you are accepting it in the joint name so such kind of questions will be asked so all of this is the same you see there is no change at all then what is changed here again uh, first we'll finish what is not changed tenure uh, should be more than six months not less than uh, not more than 36 months if you are raising it for short term fund requirement which means 10 percent of paid up capital free reserve securities premium then in that case you can have it for three months uh, uh, at least three months and less than six months but you cannot have deposits which are repayable on demand or repayable within three months so this is again same uh, yes debenture trustee is also same it is at both the places i don't know how it's missed out it's here also you can just add okay so debenture trustee applies in both the cases so that we will do now but just it's the same and reduction of rate again premature one percent less again it's the same provision what is new new is that you have to obtain credit rating from credit companies like how you have care and things like that so you have to go and apply for a credit rating. So basically it will give you rating based on how how many how much money you have accepted how timely you are in your payment based on all of that they will give you a rating and which will be published so anyone who is dealing with the company can have a look at the rating so you have to obtain that rating from the credit rating agency and it has to be obtained every year and filed with the registrar in dpt3 this is one new point so you how many new points new point two this is new point one all of this is the same then charge creation if i am issuing secured deposits there i said i can have secured or unsecured not a problem but here it is saying that if you are raising from the money uh, from the public at large and if you it's a secured deposit then in that case you will have to create a charge on the asset from registration of charges everything that we have done same charge we have to create here within a period of 30 days and should not be less than the amount of deposits accepted on tangible assets only assessed by registered value or the market value of the assets and security to be created in favor of trustee so again this is something which is new maximum amount of deposits from members we studied there it has to be less than 35 percent of paid up capital free reserves and securities premium here it says that from members if you are a public eligible company has to be 10 percent or less of paid up capital free reserve security uh, premium from others other than members 25 percent is the max that you can accept and if you are a government company maximum 35 percent this is very 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 important okay this has been asked in your mcq questions also it's very important then uh, the last point regarding acceptance of uh, uh, sorry appointment of debenture trustee now what's a debenture uh, oh it's not a debenture trustee it's a deposit trustee sorry what is a deposit trustee deposit trustee is basically a person who is a trustee and uh, who is going to uh, take care of the deposits that you have taken so it between the company and the members you have a trustee trustee will ensure that every year 20 percent is being transferred to deposit repayment reserve every year interest is being paid whatever is promised is being paid whenever there is redemption time then the amount is being repaid properly without any issues and that if it is a secured asset the asset is kept by the company and the company is not selling the asset or giving it to someone else as security so all of these things has to be maintained by the trustee so you have to appoint a trustee before you are issuing the circular and his 
his name and the trust deed executed with him will appear in your circular and the advertisement that you issue in point number two. So it will come there and this trustee because he is taking care of the money of the depositors he has to be an independent person he cannot be someone who is a director of the company or a key managerial person of the company or any relative of director or key managerial person he cannot be someone who is a part of the holding or the subsidiary company he should not be someone who has given any guarantee to the company or to whom guarantee has been given by the company or he cannot be anyone with whom company has entered into big contracts or uh, any matter which is uh, you know uh, uh, very important kind of a matter or any important kind of an arrangement or a contract with that particular person because then what happens is that he is not interested like normally they are working for the interest of the investors if you are someone who is related to the company then you may work, work for the company also so your uh, interest there is a conflict of your interest and because of that you are not able to function effectively without any bias hence you don't have to be a person who has material pecuniary interest in the company or any kind of relation with the company which is listed down here very important to remember and once a trustee has been appointed he will be there throughout the term if you want to remove the trustee then you need the consent of all the directors on the board to give their consent to remove the trustee if your company is such that it has an independent director in that case an independent director has to be there one independent director has to be there and who has to give his consent so this is pertaining to appointment of deposit trustee who can not be a trustee is an important question and it's applicable to both companies who accept money from the public at large and for uh, members who are accepting deposits from the uh, members only and the last is pertaining to your uh, punishment which is uh, uh, how much will be paid and if there is any concealment of false or misrepresentation then in that case uh, you will be liable under section 447 so a lot of things to remember but it's not something very difficult because the provisions the compliance part is similar for both the companies you just have to see what is new for public companies and add those pointers and they will never ask you questions which are uh, you know give all the compliances they will never ask you they will ask you about the compliances only rule 2 1 c very 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 important they will definitely ask you one question in your paper which is a practical case study question which is coming from your rule 2 1 c so now that you have discussed it you just have to keep going through these pointers every day and revising what are the things that were discussed here and you will be able to answer the exams in the uh, answer the questions in the examination so i hope the lecture was useful if you have any doubts please feel free to whatsapp me and i'll be glad to help you out okay thank you so much